Hi everyone, my name is Monica Brown and I'm excited to be able to share my story, Frida and her animalitos, with you today. I am an author and I wrote the words in this book and my words were illustrated by the amazing artist John Para and this book was published by North South. I grew up loving the artwork of Frida Kahlo. As you can see from the picture, she was a painter and I was introduced to her work and her paintings by my mother, Isabel Maria, who was an artist. And in fact, I am sitting in front of one of my mother's paintings. And like Frida Kahlo, my mother had some struggles with medical issues. And like Frida, she put her feelings and her passions into her paintings. So that's one reason why I wanted to write about Frida Kahlo. And what I thought when I was thinking, what? what I share with children about this amazing woman's life, I was intrigued by her relationship to her animalitos, to her little pets. Now, most of the pets that I'm gonna talk about that Frida had, she had as an adult, her famous ones that appeared in her paintings. But using my own creative license and my love of all things magical, I write about what she might have had in common with these little animalitos while she was growing up and what they might tell us about who she was and who she came to be and what role her beautiful animals ended up having in her life. So let me share the story of Frida and her animalitos. This is the story of a little girl named Frida who grew up to be one of the most famous painters of all time. Frida was special. This is also the story of two monkeys, a parrot, three dogs, two turkeys, an eagle, a black cat, and a fawn. They were Frida's pets and they were special too. Frida had a parrot named Bonito. Like her parrot, Frida was colorful. She liked to wear bold shades that celebrated indigenous Mexico and her own heritage. She lived in a house the color of a parrot's bright blue feather, La Casa Azul, where she grew up with her mom, dad, and sisters. Frida had a pet fawn named Grancio, Granicio. Like her fawn, Frida had watchful, beautiful eyes, and when Frida closed her eyes, she remembered her life as a little girl. Here we see Frida's fawn. Frida was always with her father, a photographer who taught her to look at the world through curious eyes. Frida and her father would walk to the park to collect bugs to look at under a microscope. Frida's father also taught her to put paint finishing touches on his photographs. Frida, Frida loved the small brushes and the beautiful colors. Frida had a cat with black shiny fur, the same color as her long dark hair. Like a cat, Frida was playful, but as a child, Frida couldn't always play. When Frida was six, she got very sick. She was in bed for a long time, but little Frida didn't get sad or bored. Instead, she used her breath to make a mist on her window. <sighs> and then she drew a door with her finger. Frida used her big imagination and curious eyes to walk out the door with a magic friend, a little girl who danced and played like a kitten. Frida was independent, like a cat. Frida's sickness left one of her legs different from the other and children made fun of her. 
But this didn't stop Frida from skating and riding bikes and rowing on the lakes of Chapultepec Park so that her leg could get stronger. Frida was not afraid to do things other little girls didn't usually do. She wore overalls and boxed and wrestled. Frida had two spider monkeys, Fulang Chang and Caimito de Guayabal. Like her monkeys, Frida could be mischievous, even when she was a teenager. When Frida was 15, she went to a school called the Preparatoria and found a group of friends she loved. Like Frida, her friends were curious to learn all they could. Together, they read and studied and argued and sometimes got in trouble. Wearing matching caps, they rode donkeys through the hall of the Preparatoria and set off fireworks. Frida had an eagle named Gertrudis. Like her eagle, Frida's imagination could fly high. When Frida was 18, she was in a terrible accident. And once again, she had to be in bed for many months. This time, Frida didn't create a magic friend. She created art. Frida's mother made her a special easel and hung a mirror over her canopy bed so Frida could paint. Free, Frida used her imagination and curious eyes to do just that. Feet, what do I need you for when I have wings to fly? And if those weren't enough pets, Frida had two turkeys and three dogs. Señor Choloto, Señorita Capulina, and Señora Costi. Those were the names of her three dogs. Frida's turkeys were intelligent and sensitive just like her. And like Frida, her dogs were warm and loving. When she was lonely or sad, she could wrap her arms around them and they would comfort her. Her Sholo dogs were the same breed that ran and hunted with the Aztecs thousands of years ago and a reflection of Frida's heritage of which she was very proud. Frida's dogs had no hair, but their bodies were warm and freedom gave, Frida gave them great big hugs whenever she felt lonely or sad. Frida's animalitos were spirited and entertaining, just like Frida. When her two spider monkeys were being good, Frida would hold them like babies. When they were being mischievous, they would steal socks and fruit and leap through windows so that no one could catch them. Her parrot named Bonito liked to snuggle under the covers while Frida took naps and would do tricks at the dinner table for pats of butter. Frida and Frida's animalitos played all day in the courtyard at La Casa Azul, the bright blue house on Londres Street. Her husband, Diego Rivera, even made the animals a pyramid to climb on so that her pets could roam freely. Did you know that you could visit the Casa Azul in Mexico still? It's in Coyacan, outside of Mexico City. I like this painting because Frida is in front of us and we're looking at her back, which is an unusual perspective that John the artist gave us. Frida painted and her pets would keep her company and Frida painted all the time when the birds sang, the dogs barked and the turkeys danced in the garden. Frida's animals were her children, her friends and her inspiration. Frida painted when she was sick and hurting, and Frida painted when she was happy. She also painted when Diego was gone and she was sad. But Frida was never really alone at La Casa Azul. 
the bright blue house on Londres Street. She had her animal, animalitos and herself, and she painted both. Wouldn't it be a wonderful idea, students and children and parents, if you all tried doing a self-portrait yourself and tried painting? And maybe you could include your pets in your portraits, your real ones, or maybe fit imaginary ones if you like butterflies or dinosaurs or bears or monkeys like like Frida's Fulong Chung. Frida painted herself with Fulong Chung playing with ribbons. She painted herself with Bonito the parrot and Senor Xoloto the dog. She painted her black cat too peeking over her shoulder. This is one of my favorite paintings and it is in my living room and I get a look at it every day thanks to my friend John Cara, the artist. Frida painted herself with all the pets she loves so much and even butterflies and caterpillars. Her paintings were magic. And today, if you visit Casa Azul in Coyacan, just outside of Mexico City, you might hear the sound of, the, of a bird or see a black cat jump from the pyramid that sits in the courtyard of the bright blue house on Londres Street, where Frida and her animalitos lived so many years ago. Thank you for listening to my story about the amazing Frida Kahlo. At the back of this book, there's two little surprises. One, there's more information about exactly when Frida was born and where she lived and a listing of all the paintings you can see of hers that include animalitos. And even more special to me, you get a picture of Frida Kahlo herself. And I love this picture because she's hugging her monkey and you see her little black cat, her little gatito in the background. I hope you enjoyed this story about an artist that I love so much and her animalitos. What does art mean to you boys and girls? What kind of inspiration do you need to create? Do you find your inspiration among the people you know? Are you inspired by colors and shapes? Or, you are, or are you inspired by the animalitos you see in nature and maybe even in your very own house? Take good care, stay at home, and be well.